welcome back to another vlog guys. It's November 1st, Friday, and I've been living in Switzerland since uh, 2011. It's exactly 13 years. I've never had such a beautiful and hot day uh, as the 1st of November. It's 17, 18 degrees Celsius at uh, four o'clock p.m. It's unbelievable. It's like being in spring. And speaking of spring, I created a Spring Boot application, basic one, I put it on my GitHub. Basic stuff, you know, blog post with a post comment, but I don't want to spoil everything now. Let's go talking around a cup of coffee. So calm around here and yeah look at that look over there do you know that building i'm sure you recognize that place yeah it's where montreux jazz cafe is it's over there This application, it's very simple. It has two main controllers as post controller and comment, and you know how it works. It's a blog post, so I have posts and relationships with posts, so you have comments. So this application has two main controllers, post and uh, comment controller with CRUD operations. This is not a huge project, but it's complete. I mean, uh, it has the whole flow from the uh, Docker container running every time on the fly. We launch the blog application. That means that we have a Docker Compose container running at runtime. So we don't have to create the Docker container for PostgreSQL. And by the way, I'm using PostgreSQL because it's a basic project, but I, I don't want to have H2 because I want to reflect as much as I can. Uh, and I want to be very close to the production environment. So having PostgreSQL, this is what I prefer. So having on the fly the Docker Compose, using the Spring Boot Docker Compose dependencies at runtime. So when you click blog application, you play that, you bootstrap the container for having the Postgres SQL. And you have also Flyway for migrating SQL basic. So we have a script in your resources, DB migration, it's a convention structure when you have your SQL files. So basic, you create the post and comment tables, you insert content like title and content, and you link the comment to that post. So you have three posts, three comments, for each post you have a comment and you're good to go. So Flyway handles that migration file, so you will have your files there. And you can have in your file, in that case in the application YAML, you have the credentials for connecting your database to the data source, the data source to the database, sorry. So GDBC, a URL, and you don't want to commit that. So you have an application uh, dash dev profile are in development mode, and then you have the application main YAML for using it in production. So you want to commit that, but you don't want to commit your file. So normally you max edit file using template literals, and then you push uh, this one uh, to production. Like in this case, I will show you in the 
the pipeline. Um, I will also variable environment variables, but in this case, I'm gonna push it to Fly.io because this this is will, this will be my deployment service. And I'm honestly not happy when I only have unit tests, even if I go like 80% code coverage or 100% or also 70% or 60%, but I want to have integration tests. So for that example, and you will see if you go on the repository on GitHub, I created one post controller IT, but this doesn't have marks. Actually, it has everything injected and as a test containers. And test containers is another dependency. It's another plugin from test containers, JUnit, Jupyter. And this really um, creates a database if you don't have. And it actually, it goes to the database, um, create tables if they don't exist, creates data and um, it doesn't mark data. It goes in repository and as to repository, what are the data that you have? It simulates calls to the database. So this is what I like. So every time I uh, launch that integration test, it goes uh, into Docker, Docker Desktop. So you have to use Docker Desktop. It's mandatory. It goes on the Docker Desktop bootstrap container, running the test, call the database. It, the magic happens. So it has post repository, injected, not mock, the auto wired, the mock MVC context for creating the Spring, Spring, Spring MVC context and uh, yari yari yari. And the post is done. It's an integration test, so working as expected as an integration test. And this, this is for the test. Be careful because the Docker Compose YAML file it's for your development environment, so it it's for the Docker Compose dependency to bootstrap your container on the fly. For production mode, so when you push your code, when you deploy to, in that case my service is fly, you will use your Docker Compose for ev everything like building in Maven, test and creating the target repository and push the code and deploy it on port 8080, in that case on the Fly I.O. service. You have a Fly launch that will create your configuration, docker file, doc ignore, the Fly toml. Then you have Fly deploy, but you want to create in that case Postgres cluster because your Docker Compose uh, database in Postgres, it's in lo local development, but you want to create that on Fly I.O. So Fly Postgres create. You create your own cluster and where are the credentials stored well in your application. You create the secrets and you set it to the applications. Then you will uh, connect that applications via the credentials stored in your secrets to the database. So uh, you have deployed your application, it connects to the database, so your API is ready to go. Well, are we done? I don't think so because we have, let me just fix the screen here. So we also have the flow for GitHub and this will deploy the pipeline actually, deploy our application via pipeline. Thanks to the GitHub workflow action. It's it's a CI, CD, LC more, CI. Yeah, but it's it's okay because we have to the phase when we deploy. So it's a continuous integration, continuous delivery, of course. So we have one single mail YAML file. Two main jobs, but I will show you that in my case, I also have a code coverage, but let's leave it for uh, later. But we have build and test in that phase. We want to build our application. So we want to uh, actually execute the Maven, clean compile, clean verify, but what is important is will it will execute the test. So the next job will be like deploy, but the deploy depends, needs the build and test or clean test verifier, whatever. But the second job in, in, in series, not parallel, it will depends on the first job. So it, if, if the first job clean install fails, the next job won't deploy the application. So if we take a look at the application, you know, you know it's, it's running, right? It's loading because when I open this one, it's like in hybrid, it's sleeping, is not? And this is because in my fly toml file, I have auto stop machine and auto start machine. So this is like an hybrid mode. So what do you think about that? Will you leave like 
every every everything running every time not stop or I don't know and it's not a matter of cost for me because if I want an application to run in production I would like to be an application that runs every time it depends also the use but for the moment let's leave it like hybrid having this auto stop machine in the flight normal configuration so what will it do I'm very curious about that but our application is waking up it's responding so thanks to the CICD uh, pipeline from github uh, we have a project ready to go so every time we use this API the production link in Postman and instead of using it locally we can also test uh, the application deployed as so have fun using the endpoints I documented everything on my github so with that in place every time we push something on the main branch because I don't have feature branch at the moment because it's a small project we want to start the job of code coverage with the um, clean install testing first so we have actually two jobs the clean install does also the code coverage, then we deploy the application. So every time we, we have some changes, we push and we have our application deployed and we can develop first in our development environment without changing any configuration, then we have the application deployed. Also having the same database uh, state, so we are very consistent with the state of the database and the application itself. So we have almost 72% uh, of code coverage and the Spring Boot application test passed. Have you ever used the uh, Jcoco? Jcoco? Yeah, this is for uh, Maven plugin. It's Jcoco Maven plugin version 0.8.10. And you run that, you generate a report via XML or uh, JSON or CSV. And in the job of your GitHub action, you can configure that uh, during your clean install uh, job, you can actually deploy, upload via the target folder that you have when building your CSV and you can deploy it on GitHub. And doing so, we have the code coverage badge, so we have to generate that. But uh, it was a bit tricky to have this badge because I had to create during the another branch and commit it automatically via the pipeline. So actually the pipeline has to create a branch. So for doing this, I don't really recommend, but for a small project like this, yeah, it, it's okay, you can, you can grant the permissions to write your pipeline for having this badge and creating the branch. Automatically commit and creating the SVG updated with the, with the right percentage of your code coverage. Create it, commit it, and put it in the badges folder in your .github folder at the root, and you will have the code coverage on your GitHub repository. So I switched to the camera DJI because it's more resistant to the... because it's getting foggy and wet, so I get in trouble with my mirrorless camera because days are getting shorter and this is the only thing maybe I don't like about the winter, but I like when it's cozy because you get in the restaurant and coffee, you drink your coffee in cozy mode with your laptop, you start in cold, you start in vlog. And uh, I'm not a summer guy because when it gets very hot, I, I, can, I cannot be outside and just filming with hot weather, so maybe I already told this in one of my latest videos, but yeah, a tea maybe tonight.